What's up guys and welcome back to the Fathead Cycles YouTube channel. Today we're going to be answering a question I get asked uh, a lot uh, either in person, email, on the socials, uh, whatever and that is how to wire up an aftermarket head unit for a 1999 to 2013 Harley Bagger and maintain your factory hand controls so let's uh <laughs> i almost forgot why would anybody want to add this radio or any other aftermarket radio to their to their bike uh, number one, the factory radios, the Harman radios are known for failing. You can repair them. Uh, you can have them sent out to Iron Cross Audio uh, and they will repair it for you. The repairs aren't permanent. They will fail again. Features. Let's see. Well, let's see. We added Bluetooth. Uh, added Pandora, added double USB, uh, at, re retain the CD, um, Spotify. There's a whole lot of features here that will bring your bike into the 21st century that you don't have with the Harman radio. The other thing is um, sound quality. This, this has a more powerful amplifier in it than the factory radio does. It's still not a, uh, no replacement or substitute for a add-on amplifier. Uh, adding on an amplifier, it's got three five volt preamp outputs uh, to give you good signal. Um, oh yeah, and this particular model was a marine model, so it's not waterproof. But it's, it's as waterproof as you're going to get it. Okay, so doing this is not a hard task. Uh, it's pretty simple, actually. Um, just need um, three things. First thing is a head unit. I'm going to be using the Sony MEX M70BT uh, to display with, uh, to demonstrate with. Uh, it's a great head unit. Next thing you need is the uh, Metra ASWC1. It's a steering wheel control retention device. And then the Metra 99-9600 install kit for the Harley uh, 99 to 13 bagger. So let's get this stuff opened up, see what's in there. Throw that away. So this comes with a mounting kit. I'm sorry, a uh, faceplate radio retention mount, some screws, some instructions, really good instructions. Tells you about uh, how to take your fairing apart, whether it's a road glide, a street glide, an ultra. It tells you about your wiring connections, and it also tells you about uh, initiating the ASWC1, which we'll get into later. Wiring harness, go ahead and open that up. This is going to plug right in to your wiring harness from your motorcycle. It's got the factory 23 pin connector on it already connected. It's got some, some connections that we have to make. We're going to go over them. Uh, it also has a 3.5 millimeter aux jack that plugs into the back of the radio, the head unit. And it's got a pre-terminated harness connection for the ASWC-1. 
So we're going to set all this stuff to the side for right now. Let's open up the ASWC one. Comes with instructions, it comes with a bunch of wires. The only thing we really want is that module right there. That is what's going to make our handlebars controls work. So throw all that stuff in the trash. Next we're going to open up our head unit. The head unit's got a couple things. It's got a detachable faceplate. Got a Bluetooth microphone. I normally do not install those on motorcycles because, well, it's kind of pointless with the wind noise. It's got its own wiring harness for the head unit itself. Owner's manual and guide. Got your quick start guide in here. More screws. Two keys. These keys are very important. We're going to need those in a minute. Got an installation guide that opens up. It tells you how to do everything. Multiple different languages. Blah blah blah. And the G Wiz piece. Your remote control for your head unit on your motorcycle. And then we have the actual head unit itself. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up or not, but this cam this head unit has a plastic uh, protector to help keep the water out. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're simply going to pop by pushing forward the faceplate or the uh, the trim bezel off. That's trash. Second thing we're going to do want to do is take these two keys that we were talking about earlier, install them beveled side towards the head unit on each side and we're going to slide the radio cage off. It's no longer needed. So what we're going to do with our tabs in the up position we're just simply going to slide our head unit in from the rear. And that's what it should look like when it's done. To secure the head unit into the mounting kit, we're going to take the screws that came in the Sony kit, or the Sony box, four Phillips head screws, we're going to get our Phillips head screwdriver, and we're going to put them, see if I can do this on camera, we're going to put them
in two of the holes. It does not matter which two. But you have two that are right up close to the cage. Those are the ones that you're going to want to use. And your radio is now mounted. What I like to do here, just so it doesn't get lost, damaged, or broken, is go ahead and install the faceplate onto the radio. We're going to set the radio aside for a minute. We're going to bring that back in a little bit though. So, we have, so, we have two harnesses the one that came with the Sony kit, with the Sony radio, and then the one that came with the Metra kit. We have to join these two, kit, uh, two harnesses together so that the Sony radio is plugged in and powered by the motorcycle itself and also gets sound. Then this piece here is all pre-wired and pre-teed in and then we're going to maintain our handlebar controls. So the Harley harness itself has uh, two gray wires, two white wires, a yellow wire, a red wire, and a black wire. Okay. These kits use a fairly uh, uses the universal wiring coloring system. Uh, black is obviously the the motorcycle chassis ground. Red is the 12 volt switch power. Yellow is our battery constant for our memory. The white wire with no stripe is left front positive. White wire with the black stripe is left front negative. Then we have the gray, uh, gray wire with a black stripe, that's right front negative, and then right front positive, the gray wire all by itself. But over here, we have a ton more wires. Got a long black one, that's for an independent chassis ground. We're gonna cut that back in a minute. We got the yellow, got the orange and white. The orange and white is for the illumination. That's not gonna be used. Orange and white is not going to be used in this uh, application. We have our front speaker wires. Then we have this blue wire with a white stripe. That is for a amplifier turn on. We have our gray wires that are for the right front. Then these green and purple ones the extra ones in the kit are for the rear speakers if you have an ultra. So, the first thing I like to do is take my wire cutters and shorten this whole harness up by about an inch, inch and a half. Just because it has extra wire in it just makes everything behind the radio a little bit neater. A pair of automatic wire strippers, they are your best friend when you're doing an install like this. You simply insert the wire, squeeze the trigger, and you now have a stripped wire. So we're going to go through, we're going to strip every wire but the orange wire.
All right, everything is done. So, so now comes the controversial part on how to make these wires stick to these wires. I personally will use solder wrapped with heat shrink. I personally think that is the best way to make a connection. I'm not here to debate uh, butt connectors versus solder. Butt connecting is also a very good form of connection. Uh, the only recommendation I make is that you cover it with a piece of heat shrink to keep it as weatherproof as possible so we don't get any corrosion in our terminals going down the road. The one thing I don't want to see people do, uh, and believe, believe it or not, I have seen it, is take these two wires, wrap them together like that, and then put a piece of electrical tape on them. That's no good. I've seen people um, put these together with uh, wire nuts uh, and they just twist them together. My wire nuts are made for home electricity, not our 12 volt system. Uh, it's, not gonna main, it's not going to withstand the vibration and everything else. Take the time, do it right the first time. So get the soldering iron fired up. Got the soldering iron warming up. Gonna go ahead and twist all of my wires so that way they are ready to solder. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is isolate the blue and white wire, the amplifier turn-on lead out of the radio harness. I'm going to slide a piece of heat shrink over top of it. And I am going to install a female insulated connector on the end. And I do this for two reasons. Number one, so that we don't have a 12 volt positive wire sitting in the back of the radio in the fairing just dangling around making contact but also customer or installer or whoever down the road decides to put a remote terminal wire in this bike they can come in with a male spade connector and simply plug it in. There's no harness, uh, I'm sorry, there's no other wiring connections that need to be made to this. And the heat shrink is just like for the butt connectors to keep this as weather resistant as possible. Next I'm going to take and I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink right now over top of every single wire in the Sony harness. I do it now so that I don't forget later. Alright, so I got all my heat shrink on the wires. Now it's time to bring the other harness in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my yellow wires battery constant and I'm going to wrap them around each other until they look real nice. Bring in my soldering iron and solder them together. Now I have 
a nice strong connection that my heat shrink will go up over top of and cover up. I'm going to go ahead and match up the rest of these colors, yellow to yellow, red to red, black to black, gray to gray, gray no or gray with a stripe to gray with a stripe, white to white and white with a stripe to white with a stripe. Quick and easy. I'm going to show you guys soldering all of them. I'm sitting a harness challenge or anything seeing how fast I can do it, but it's pretty boring to sit here and watch. So hopefully I can get the uh, it figured out on how to fast forward when I edit this video. Okay, all of our connections are made are yellow, red, black, white, white with a black stripe, gray, gray with a black stripe. Now we're going to slide our heat shrink up over all of our solder joints. We're going to get out our pencil torch and shrink down all this heat shrink. You don't need a pencil torch to do this. It's just easier for me. If you don't have a pencil torch, you can use a standard traditional Bic cigarette lighter. Technically at this point our harness is complete. Okay. A uh, couple things we're going to do to uh, make sure that things are best for the customer and most reliable. We're going to take this piece of heat shrink and we're going to shrink it down over top of the orange illumination wire. Now we're just going to bend that over. That'll keep that water tight. So, this next two. The next thing is we still have these four wires hanging out here. These green and purple wires. Like I said, they go to the rear of the motorcycle or to the rear speakers. Well, if you have a street glide and you're never planning on adding a set of saddlebag lids uh, with speakers or even lower fairing speakers, you can just do the same thing with these as I did with the illumination wire. Cut them flush, cut the little wire end off here, and put the piece of heat shrink on top of it. Me personally, what I like to do since I'm building this uh, harness for an unknown customer. I don't know what bike it's going to go in or anything else. I like to take and I have some extra 16 gauge speaker wire. Uh, it's green and black so it matches the colors. It's uh, purple and purple and black so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip down these wires And then I'm going to go ahead and match them to their corresponding pieces. And solder them in place. So the reason we have to add these wires is because on a Ultra Classic, uh, Road Glide Ultra, anything that has the Tour Pack speakers, there is a secondary harness that comes into the back of the radio that will then feed power and ground to the speakers. 
since it's in a secondary harness. Metro doesn't make a harness uh, yet to allow for a quick plug and play installation. So this is what we have to do. So I put these extensions on there just so they can get moved over and get tapped off uh, or tap into the other harness. So next thing I'm going to do is bring back in the radio. I'm going to peel off this blue piece of tape. Blue piece of tape is holding the external USB. It's a great feature. You can run it back to the saddlebag. Uh, tour pack if you got one. Uh, road glide you can drill a hole in the glove box and just pop that through what I'm interested in is I'm going to place the harness in its location and then the 3.5 millimeter aux jack is going to get plugged into the spot right there that says remote. That is so when the signal passes from the ASWC1, it will come into the radio and tell it what to do. So now that I have all of this, harnessed together on my table, I can lay out my wires as to what's going to happen. What I like to do, just to give it a really clean professional look, is take a piece of uh, fabric tape and start wrapping the entire harness. So we take this, and I just incorporate all the wires pull the blue wire out Go down past the connections. And then I'm going to split out the purple and green. Leave the ends a little loose so that way the customer can identify what they have going on. I then bring my ASWC1 and I simply Plug it in. This radio is now ready to get installed in any Harley motorcycle except for the CVO uh, factory amplified models. So, all right, guys, so that's it. That's how I personally uh, wire up an aftermarket stereo. Uh, for a 99 to 2013 uh, Harley Davidson motorcycle. The Metro 999600 makes it easy to make it happen. The ASWC1 makes it so that you retain your handlebar controls. There's zero programming, no flashing, nothing needed, no external wires. Uh, Metro has really improved their system there. Um, the Sony MEX M70BT, it's a great stereo. Like I said, it's a marine stereo. It's got USB in the front, USB in the rear, three uh, five volt preamp outputs, CD, AM, FM, Pandora, you name it, it's there. Uh, so, if this is something that interests you, 
I will have all of these products on my website, um, fatheadcycles.com. You can purchase them. I will also have the new MEX M71 BT uh, that just came out. You can buy all of these items individually and do the entire uh, process that you just saw yourself, or I will sell them as a bundled kit pre-wired just the way you saw it. So all you have to do is take your fairing off, put your stereo in, and you'll be ready to go. Obviously, I'll, I'll include all the instructions uh, that you need to take the fairing apart, uh, acclimate the module to the motorcycle. I'll include the owner's guide, the remote, everything. I want to say right now, these MEX M70 BTs are on my website for $200. Um, they are going fast, and once the MEX M70 is gone, it will be gone forever. Uh, then we'll only have the M71. So, thank you guys for coming by. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button right here, the little logo. Kind of looks like this. And hit that notification bell so that way you know anytime I upload a new video. So thank you guys for hanging out for a couple minutes. Until next time, have a great day.